So how are things in South Carolina? Uh, at the moment, they are gorgeous. 70s, everything's green. Plants are growing. The weather is fine. It is summertime and the living's easy, man. Well, you know, you beat us today because we were supposed to be in the 60s today. And, uh, you know, we, we live on that little hill, as my wife likes to call it, uh, uh, Mount Christiansburg. Um, and it was fifties wind blowing like crazy. And I have a fire going in the shop. Like you would not believe. So, uh, uh Oh yeah. yeah well, we, were, we were sporting the shorts today, man. So. Uh, uh, we, do, we are supposed to be in the eighties on Sunday. So we're thrilled to death with that. Yeah. I know eighties like my. 78 is kind of my cutoff point. After 78, I'm no longer happy anymore. <laughs> well, kind of like when I used to play golf, I used to tell people I wouldn't play unless it was in the 80s. And they said 85, 86. I said anything 80 or above, I'll play golf. <laughs> oh, jeez. You need to come hang out in Yuma, Arizona for a week. <laughs> uh, I have that lives in Phoenix. So I know all about that good old. Right heat. Yeah. 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 It's good. It gets crazy. Or go to AWFS in the summer, uh, in <laughs> Las Vegas. Right. Yeah. There's that too. <laughs> I haven't so, been in Vegas in 25 years. Oof, long uh, time. Well, we need to get there. We need to, maybe we, sh you and I should uh, take a trip and go see Jimmy Clues. There, there you go. <laughs> that'd be all right wouldn't it <laughs> he is uh he's quite the character in the wood turning world so right on so what have you been up to you know uh, you, you got to kind of see the shop tour I, i've been working really hard on getting this shop done and completed and now i am ready to start filming um talk to uh troy downs today he is uh the guy that he's my partner, a uh, buddy of mine that has just really gone above and beyond. And uh, he is, uh, he is going to get uh, my YouTube world set up. Uh, I know it'll never reach yours, but uh, I'm looking forward to trying. Never say never, man. YouTube is a weird place. You never know what's going to happen next there. Yeah, that's just so. true. You know, you shoot a beer to your neighbor. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Build a walking dinosaur, shoot a beer to your knee. You never know what's going to happen on that place. I but. see that box you've been working on lately, that nice little S box. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, you know, I was trying to think of something to do with the bendy board, just kind of a, show people that it's not hard to do formed furniture. If you, you know, just if you don't get too technical about it, you can always get as technical as you want. You know that. But um, there's some pretty easy, simple methods to do some pretty fun looking furniture. And I thought with you know all the dads at home right now looking for things to do, that might be something they could explore or maybe um, add, add to their repertoire of skill sets. So I, was, that, so I wanted to show that. And um, of course, the gardening, this is, you know, this is the beginning of the gardening season. So, you know, I'm up to my elbows in worm poop. Yes, you are, man. I saw that this morning. So, Worm poop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm doing that, and uh, we're doing a whole. We're actually turning the basement into something of a, a testing area for indoor plants and hydroponic systems, and just some fun stuff. Sounds so that awesome. that kind of takes up a lot of energy right now. But that's about that's kind of waning off. We're about at the end of that, so we'll be focusing a lot more on content again, doing some fun builds, and you know, just trying things. Well, you know, as I've told everyone, uh, and matter of fact, if you watch the shop tour, you saw the Izzy tomatoes. I did. I watched the shop tour. Yep. Yeah, I did. Uh, I really, I'm jealous of how you have your dust, your dusty operations kind of away from the rest of your shop. I was like, man, that is sweet. Well, you know, it, it, remember I've been doing this for about 20 years, collecting tools. Um, this shop that I'm in right now, um, I started building about five years ago. Um, that includes the uh, fence or um, should I say compound around the yard um, as well as a couple of decks and a uh, few other projects. Right um, on. You know, it's taken me a long time to get here and I'm, I'm 
it's now that it's done, I'm thinking, wow, I know I can fill this here, or do this here. Um, and, and I'm already thinking of ways of changing it, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there's a woodworker out there that doesn't, you know, I'm like, you know, I don't have a, a, a jointer in my shop and I, um, I haven't for many years. I can I, I kind of come back this backwards where a lot of folks in, in this genre are coming from the DIY world. I come from the professional world. And um, one of the things that we never really had in, in pro shops was a jointer. You know, we were buying all of our stuff was coming from cabinet shops. It was S4S. We had straight lighting rip systems. So if we needed a straight edge, we just ran over to a, a rip a rip saw and shoved it That's through right. there. And we had a glueable edge, you know. Yeah. You know, we weren't worried about surfacing things on a joiner. We, we needed to surface something. It would go through a planer that would eat a house, you know. Um, so, and I, the one, the few shops that I've been in, you know, I've seen guys just tear their fingers off with jointers. So they've always, it's always scared me because my shop isn't necessarily just my shop. It's kind of a quasi public shop. I have friends that come in and use the shop. I have people that I work with that come in and use things and without, that proper skill set. Some of these are brand new folks. Some are very experienced folks. You know, I just don't want to have that availability for them to damage themselves. So I didn't, I don't keep one, I don't keep one in the shop, but now I'm kind of thinking because of kind of a side move I'm making, I may, <laughs> I may want one. So now I'm like, where am I going to put that thing? <laughs> so how am I going to move things around and make that fit? You, you know how it is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, every time I, I, you know, my newest toy is my uh, nine inch uh, belt sander, which, you know, I, I'm stepping up from a four inch by 36 inch belt to a nine inch by 135 inch belt. Mm. Um, I'm, I, I, I can see a couple of knuckles going. Yeah. What's the horsepower on that? Is that a one point one, one was it one and three quarter horse on the big one there? Uh, no, I think it's a three. <gasps> oh, nice! It is I, I promise you, it will uh, it will ignite some, wood if you leave yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some sixty grit on there and just eat two by fours alive. <laughs> Watch how fast we can make this two by four disappear. <laughs> now, you know, more than anything, I'm excited about the height of it because I'm always doing bandsaw boxes. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything over about maybe six inches or so because you can hit one side, flip it over, get the other side. Um, but with nine inches, man, I sky's the limit on bandsaw boxes. Right. Cut the height of my bandsaw now. So, or sand the height of my bandsaw. So I, I'm excited about it. That's really cool. That is really cool. I, um, for the record, have the 10 inch by 48 inch sander. I, that's a one and a half horse, one and one and a quarter horse, maybe. Wait a minute. You have a bigger sander than I do? No, no, no. My sander is smaller than yours. <laughs> yeah, but I heard 10. Mine's only nine. No, mine, you can sand four, five inches high, four, four, oh. roughly four and a half. It's a 10, you know. Well, I feel better now. I, I yeah, found yeah. something better than Izzy. Yeah, well, your band size. You got a bigger band saw than I do too. But I got to tell you that I love my, I love my, uh, my Rikon. My, I got that Pro Series 14 inch. I love it. So well, you know, we all have our tools that we love, and uh, you know, uh, if you enjoy it, by God, flaunt it. Yep, absolutely. So well, yeah. you, uh, you ready for our first question, Sandra? Do we have a question? Matter of fact, I know we have a question because someone asked before. Um, we started tonight. Um, in fact, it was on the, uh, uh, other video. They said, uh, question for tonight. I like making bandsaw boxes. Uh, I see y'all on YouTube using glue and spray activator. Is this any good? And what kind is best getting tired of waiting for the glue to dry? Um, you know, I, I personally, I I'd rather wait for the glue to dry. Um, I, I like the uh, yellow glue um, when it comes to the bandsaw boxes, um, and uh, uh, you can use the super glue and the spray activator, and, and that works just fine. The issue is when you go to sand it, it tends to uh, uh, leave the edges. Uh, it seals the edges so that when you uh, stain it or something like that, you see the blotchy edges. And with the yellow glue, I just don't get that. Um, so it's worth the wait 
uh, of uh, uh, waiting for that yellow glue to dry. What do you think? Um, you know, it really depends on the size of the glue up for me, I guess, in a lot of cases, if I'm doing small things, mitered corners, I, I'm, I don't want to wait either. And I find that if I use something like a 2P10 product with a Mohawk activator, I don't get that cloudiness that you're talking about in the finish as much as you do when you use other products. Um, you can tell I'm in my shop. Apologize for that. I didn't realize I'd have my, my air compressor was still on. Oh, it happens. Um, um, but you know, as far if if there's if it's a if it's a long grain to long grain glue up and there's you know any more than just a few inches, I'm I'm going to use wood glue. You know, I mean that just makes the most sense. Psychoanalyte has a whole different property than wood glue does in in its weight, in its strength, and how it adheres material and um, its longevity even, uh, psychoanalyte is not gonna last anywhere near as long as, as a wood glue will last on, on a wood glue up. And it was never really meant for large glue ups or you know, long glue ups, it's meant for small like miter joints and things like that, that you know, that's really what it's meant for. Or right. Now if, you said uh, the activator, uh, go back to that activator because that interests me. I use just uh, you know, a spray activator or a uh, uh, pump activator um and you know they all have kind of the same smell um you used a different word yeah we um there's certain activators have certain ingredients in it now there's some of them that are slightly less potent than others um i i'm not i don't know the chemical makeup so i'm not going to pretend like i do what i do know is that if i use something like a 2p10 product or a starbun product and i spray it with their activator and then i put a lacquer finish over the top of it Anytime that where there's that joint, there's cloudiness right around that joint. If I use a Mohawk activator, there isn't. I don't get that line. Well, and, and where don't I don't ask, don't ask me why. I don't know. I mean, that's just the you know, you know how it goes. Trial and error stuff. Good to know. I mean, I I got to give that a whirl myself because there are certain things that uh, you just can't clamp up properly. Uh, yeah, I for the longest time I was I wouldn't use an activator if I knew or a psychoanalyte if I was going to be spraying something with um with lacquer finish, and then my buddy um my buddy Mike turned me onto it and I was like this is awesome so I mean again and it's only you know if you think of a cabinet job when you're doing some like small you know corner molding or maybe even like a small crown molding around the top of a cabinet and you want to bring those miters together and hold them there while you're brad nailing it off or whatever, that's what I would use it for. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not talking about gluing up panels with, with, you know, uh, psychoanalyte glues. Right. And, and it's more for, uh, it's more of a bandsaw box question, uh, right. you know, where, you know, if you are trying to get those weird angles and uh, uh, edges and, and where I would really probably use it if I needed to right. um, would be just little spots. That way I would also use the yellow glue uh, mm -hmm. and allow it to dry, but also not have so much of that sealant on the wood, which kind of shows uh, up in the finishing process. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, I get that whole not wanting to wait for the glue to dry, man. I feel him for that one. I think most, I think every woodworker uh, at some point is going, man, I really wish I could keep moving right now. <laughs> oh, let's see here. We got all kinds of uh, people showing up. Uh, uh, Troy Downs, uh, he is the uh, guy that is helping me with uh, uh, the website. He says, hello. Um, we've got uh, Patrick. Um, he says, hello guys. Um, and uh course rebecca de groot um you know you got you gotta love rebecca she just absolutely never gives up she is one of these and i i hear between me and you don't tell anybody but i hear that she's teaching at mark adams this year what yes rebecca's teaching at mark adams Yes, that's awesome. Is it not? I I was so proud of her when I heard that. So uh, that's amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, could not. And it well well deserved. I mean, um, it, it, as far as watching the stuff that's going out on out there online, Rebecca has one of those, you know, the, this kind of eyes for for balance and for just the kinetic the the kinetics the 
She connects to people. She yeah, connects I, to weird people like you and, he, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> but she just, she has that eye for, for things that just work. Where, you know, you when you would, if I were to look at it, I'd be like, eh, I don't know. But then she does something and you're like, that's exactly. awesome. You yeah, know, she, so she she's sees, got, but a lot of people don't see. Right. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So Sandra tells me we got a couple of questions. Let's go to our first one. Bobby wants to know what's your what's your opinion on riser blocks on a bandsaw? You got an opinion on can you hear Sandra back there, is he? I can, yeah, very well. Okay. Um <laughs> I not see you, you kind of put me on the spot here because I'm sitting in, in the you know chat room with the the bandsaw guy and I I've never I, I owned one bandsaw purchased this way with the riser block on it um so you love them it wasn't terrible yeah, you know it 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 was under the motor it was underserved for the motor that was on it because I, I mean I had a cut capacity that the motor really couldn't you know the value wasn't there was it, you know, was it a Delta? It was a Delta. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine why. Because Delta, they came out with a three-quarter. Then they went to a one-horse. And I don't think they got much bigger than that. Um, and, you know, Delta saws were really built well. Um, mm -hmm. Their tolerances were, were a little too tight. Um, because that top wheel really doesn't have a whole lot of room to move. Uh, but if you take a Delta and you upgrade that motor to about a two horse, you can resaw the 12 inch capacity. It is a laser beam uh, machine um, and you can buy a riser block for a Delta on eBay only. Um, there is a manufacturer that has remade those um, and you can get them for like 235, 250, somewhere in that range. So they're more expensive. Uh, than your average uh, riser block, but absolutely much cheaper than going out and buying another saw just to be able to resaw. I've always said that cast iron frame saws are wonderful saws for general purpose and scroll cutting, and they will do some resawing. Your steel frame saws are great resaw uh, machines, and they'll do some scrolling. So that's kind of how I feel uh, when it comes to those two type of saws and, and kind of how I, 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 a riser block is always going to give you a longer blade, uh, which means more teeth, longer lasting blade, um, a higher cut capacity. Um, there are just too many good things uh, that can come from a riser block, in my opinion. So you like the riser block as long as the motor's there to match it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and when it comes to uh, cutting uh, logs and, uh, uh, bowl blanks, things like that, you, you're going to have to beef up that motor. But you got to remember, most of those motors are standard four bolt motors. These are motors that you can buy on eBay. You can buy them just about anywhere, fairly inexpensive. Um, you can get a three horse motor uh, for 150 bucks. Um, as long as you're willing to, uh, you know, uh, wire it 220, uh, motors are fairly inexpensive. Yeah, I think you just said something that's key um, when it comes to motors is being able to wire them 220. You get so much more out of a motor if you can, you know, run it through 220. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it just, um, it, it almost doubles uh, your um, breaker capacity, um, mm -hmm. what it, it's basically doing. Yeah, so. it, can, it, can, it can handle a lot more torque you oh, know, yeah. with running through 220. So. Absolutely. Sandra, um, she says that we've got, we, we are just absolutely loaded here. So, um, all right, bring them on. All right. Patrick with Dragonfly Aprons would like to know, Izzy, what screws do you use? G, Who? A, drywall, or et cetera? Yes. <laughs> um, I have, at any given time in my shop, there's probably 300 pounds of fasteners. So, um, you know, in, in Alex, maybe you'll back me up on this. Um, as, as an old timer woodworker, you, you tend to do things that just work. And if you find something that's working for you, you do it for a really long time. And then something new comes along. 
that it better be pretty significantly better than what works already for you. Absolutely. So um, I made the switch to mostly SPACs for my, my woodworking stuff maybe 10, 12 years ago. Um, and they kept making constant improvements. And then PowerPro came out and made some better improvements. And so I have in my shop, you'll find the GKRs, the Power Pros, you'll find SPACs, you'll find, you know, just because the only place I know where I can buy 25 pounds of pocket hole screws is from the cabinet shop down the road. And they're the old traditional, you know, they just have the cylinder head, no fancy flare outs or anything. Just, um, I have those in here. Um, everything I don't, I, you know, the only thing that might not be in my shop for the, with the exception of some like hardware screws for hinges and such are Phillips head. I don't carry, there are not too many of those. Most of mine are, you know, the old Roth square heads or the, uh, or the star bits. Yeah. I, I, myself, uh, I keep a lot of the, um, and, and I, I do a lot of my screws at Lowe's, uh, for my building now mm -hmm. or furniture and stuff like that. I'll use a square drive, Craig, uh, screws, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I have never, um, really gotten into some of the, uh, uh spec screws, so, um, you know, maybe you should educate us on that and tell us a little bit uh, why you like those um, versus, let, let's say, versus a, a Craig screw, because that I'm, I'm aware of. Well, all right, let's take the traditional, like we're talking Craig screw. So you have the traditional screw. Uh, they started mass producing screws in 1780, 1790s. And when I say mass producing, there was 30 guys making 1,200 a day. <laughs> so we're not talking huge mass production. And for basically 140 years, nothing happened. It was a, it was a you know a single slot wood screw. Um, in the 90s, you start or in the in the in 18, 1890, 18, 1880, you started seeing um, some other options coming out. And then it was it wasn't until gosh it was 1920s when Phillips head was actually patented. Oh really? It was it, it wasn't that long ago. It was like 100 years ago, right? And then you saw the star bits and you saw the advent of all these other things. And that kind of changed over the course of the years until about the 50s, 60s, when they started going, hey, we can do things with the, you know, the teeth. Like we'll put a little groove on the end of the teeth so it kind of chews out some wood, doesn't split as badly as, you know, um, wood screws do. And then you saw started, you, you started to watch the, the, um, the winding around the teeth um they started having little wave patterns in them and then they started putting little dents in them and all these things made small improvements in how it bites into the wood how um how it's you know again uh as a pro woodworker you're always looking for that thing that can save you a little bit of time you know I, because all those little things that save you time end up you know end up affecting your pocketbook in the end at the end of the day so you look at those things and then you know, pro uh, like Power Pro's making a big play right now on the market, and they <laughs> they should be. They have an amazing lineup of screws, and I think one of the things that I've been doing recently over the past few years is I I use more finish screws. You know, the little tiny finish screws now than I do than I probably do the full size screws. Apparently, your dog doesn't agree, but I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, I in in my projects. <laughs> You know, I use a lot of the finish screws in my projects as opposed to, um, the, you know, the larger head woodworking, you know, traditional woodworking screws. Um, so you use the, the, what we would call a fine thread versus the coarse thread? No, these are actually finish screws. So you think of it as like a, as a eight gauge nail to a brad nail. Huh. It's a different style, you know, it's a whole different style screw, has a much smaller head, uh, typically has a. Um, kind of a reverse thread at the end of the head to kind of give it some more bite into the top board that you're screwing down. Um, and it's a lot less of a, if you're, you know, filling it or, or plugging, it, it's a lot less of a hassle. And, and you know, I, I really should do a little bit more research on it because, you know, I, as the stuff that I do is, is again, it, it is a good bit of uh, bandsaw work. But I've always been a, a screw guy. I, I'm, I do not like the uh, brad points and things like that. I, I know, and I'm getting more and more uh, used to the thought of maybe using them on some finish work and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, but I, I, I really should check out uh, what you're talking about there, the smaller yeah. head. Or well, 
I was going to say woodworkers, not, not, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to kind of stereotype us for a second and do forgive me for that because we don't all fit into that same genre, but we tend to overkill as, as a group of people, What? we lean more towards overkill than we do, you know, just doing what we should do. Um, and I always find it funny. I, you know, I always said, if I see somebody driving a tank to the grocery store to get groceries, it's going to be a woodworker, you know, because they just overdo everything. So um, in that fashion, I try to back off with that a little bit when I'm doing projects. I'm like, okay, I, this doesn't need this, or this doesn't need to have dovetails or box joints or be able to hold 700 pounds. It's a end table. Yeah. So. I think you've just enlightened my wife a good bit um, <laughs> because I do a little overkill on maybe just a few things. Um, oh, yeah, I believe it. My uh, my all time fan is Tim, the tool man, Taylor. Right. My on. goal in life one day is to meet Tim, the tool man, Taylor. <laughs> Sandra, yeah. what's your next question? Michelle wants to ask Izzy. How long was your daughter upset about the bag of worms? Oh, 30 seconds. As soon as the camera went off, she came back and was playing with them, like, you know, <laughs> minutes later. I think it was just shock factor. You know, she had no idea it was in the bag, and I opened it up, and there's a bunch of creepy crawlies in there. So, and I mean, it wasn't like there was 10 of them. There's 2,000 of them just kind of crawling over each other. So, <laughs> she had... Her, her reaction was justified, but I mean, you know, she was down there playing in horse poop and, and worms helping me put the worm, the worm farm together, you know, the next day. So she's fine. She's fine. Uh, and Michelle, uh, have you ever seen dragonfly uh, aprons? Have I, are you talking to your wife or me? No, I'm talking to you. Have you ever seen dragonfly aprons? Are you, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely yeah yes these got those i have two of their um two of their xl sidekicks in the shop i've got one i bought one for um one of the guys that works with me um they're just i love these guys i love their aprons as well they're gorgeous michelle is the one that is the uh the seamstress she is the yep. one that gets it so oh yeah uh, i i i have uh mine i i've worn it in so nicely now it, it it's almost like a piece of uh fabric yeah. And every morning when I put that bad boy on, I just I I almost want to grunt. <laughs> All right. It's like strapping on the leathers before you jump on your Harley. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna go there, but okay. <laughs> What's our next question? John is building a 20-inch fan stall and he has the three horsepower motor. Will that be sufficient for milling? uh how high are you going to try and if you know i mean if you have a 20 inch resaw capacity on that i'm going to say three horse isn't going to cut it if he's got a 20 inch resaw capacity um i would agree i think she said he was doing a 20 inch bandsaw oh okay all right my bad no and i would agree with you if there was if there was 20 inches involved five horse minimum yeah so but uh yeah, when it comes to, if, if you're just going to resaw, use it as a resaw machine, three horse should be more than enough uh, to get you um, cutting, uh, unless you're going to do it for production. And if you're going to do it production, um, then you should probably step up to a five, just because that machine is going to be running eight hours a day, you know, five days a week, um, best to not put as much load on it. Yeah, for sure. All right. What's our next question? Who says hello? Somebody out there has got to say hello. <laughs> Nobody wants to. Aaron wants to know, when do you use CA glue instead of wood glue to put boxes together? Um, never. <laughs> you never just... use CA glue to put boxes together. You use it as a holding, as a fastener, if you want to, if you're trying to put something together, you need something really quickly tacked in place while you're putting other fasteners in it, or perhaps that goofy trick I keep seeing online where people would wood glue and then a little blank spot and then CA gel to kind of hold it all together for the glue up. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so, 
Um, yeah, I, if it were a teeny little bandsaw box, then uh, again, I, I would put the yellow glue on there and I would put a dab maybe on the corners um, and hit it so that it holds it in place because some of the smaller boxes are, are difficult to clamp and hold together. Um, and that CA glue uh, would help just as a clamping mechanism, but you still want to use that yellow glue um, to basically hold that box together. It, it also eliminates, uh, in my opinion, uh, that sealing of the wood uh, so that if you do decide to stain it or finish it, uh, you won't kind of get that blotchy finish. Yeah. Uh, yep. And I, I um, rubber bands. My, uh, my grandfather was a notorious bandsaw box builder. He did that all. I mean, he had, I, I bet he had more selections and sizes of rubber bands in his shop than most offices had. Yeah. And, and that, yeah. I agree with you. Rubber bands are just invaluable when it comes to those small, hard to clamp uh, pieces. Um, and, and I never have enough in my shop. But uh, yeah, it, it would be nice to have a nice selection like that. That's, that's an, a great idea. What's our next question? Patrick wants to know any big plans for an out, any big plans for an outdoor project in the yard? <laughs> uh, Patrick knows that I've been wanting very fiercely to build a large-ish wooden Ferris wheel for my kids um but i i can't i i i started out this spring thinking i'm gonna do it this year and most people um a lot of people know that i had back surgery in january and a massive one four fusions two cages two um bridges put in and i am still you know i still have a long way to go for recovery i mean this is a full year recovery it's no it's a no joke recovery and it's not it's not a you can bend the rules a little bit kind of thing because if you bend the rules and you fall or you pull something the wrong way it's back to surgery again so i'm playing it pretty close to the cuff and i think any major big builds like that are probably going to get put off until this winter or even you know next next spring next summer either that or until you but invite your buddy alex up to hold the, the, the <laughs> <laughs> here lift this <laughs> so i don't know maybe that would be a thing maybe sometime this fall after all the the shows and the chaos and the, you know provided we we're able to go and all that stuff um calms down we could do something like you know get a group of folks together do something fun you know in the spirit of izzy um let's let's guess at how big the circle would be for a ferris wheel for your kids just just give me a spitball me a number <laughs> You want them to comment or do you want me to actually answer that question <laughs> on izzy <laughs> are you there yeah i'm here can you hear me i can um how big would this the radius be of this ferris wheel well ultimately i'd want it to be about 20 feet tall so the radius would have to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 18 about 18 feet so do you think it's possible that you and i could make a circle cutter that would do an 18 foot circle on the oh, bank heck yeah I, yeah we could I think it's a must i think we could definitely do that we'd have to move the bandsaw outside but we could do it there are forklifts available that's true <laughs> <laughs> what's our next question gary jones also loves tool man and he has his poster in the shop and he wants to know if you've been watching last man stand uh I, I absolutely have, um, and, and uh, you know, I, I love his absolute uh, rants. Um, they're almost as good as what he used to do um, when he started the tool show and went off on a tangent, and next thing you knew, he was in trouble with his mother-in-law or his wife or God only knows who. Uh, but it, it, his mouth always got him in trouble, but it never slowed him down. <laughs> the one the one show that really stuck out with me is when these kids had a, a dance and he built this like whole dance floor for them and then he waxed it like 70 times so you couldn't even walk on the thing because it was like an ice skating right kids like i mean anytime a kid went up there they'd fall right down so there was no dancing being done it was Randy's amazing. girlfriend was hurt i remember the that's episode. right that's right that's right <laughs> oh uh, i love that show <laughs> all right Jason wants to know, where did you get the worms? 
Uh oh, we got oh, a I, first worm question. <laughs> right. Um, well, I, I hate to admit it, I bought them off of Amazon. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was looking at eBay today. As soon as I saw you talking the the worm poop farm, I thought, you know, I don't have yeah. time for the worm poop farm, but. I could get some worms for my vegetables this year. Oh yeah. And they love them. They love them. So that's what we do with the excess. We dump, we dump all the worms in with the, with the plants and let them aerate the roots. And it's great. Well, we, we've been bad for a few years. We have uh, every bug or worm or grub we find, we give to our girls. Um, <laughs> we have chickens and of course, so do you, you grab chickens and ducks yeah. and, just about everything there. Um, but it, uh, as I told a lot of people last night, one of the stipulations when I sold my house in Georgia was uh, if I moved to Virginia, I got chickens. Well, um, Sandra was a little standoffish about it. <laughs> now they are her girls, her babies. Um, and all she has to do is walk out the door and say, girls, you have chickens flocking everywhere. <laughs> That would be that would be my daughter. My my daughter has that that effect on the chickens. They just love her because she feeds them everything. That's so, right. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. There's yeah, nothing cool. better than chicken football too. That's when you throw them a bug and then they start racing around chasing each other. <laughs> oh yeah, that's pretty funny. Yep. All right, a little off subject here. What do we got, Sandra? <laughs> okay, here's a question from Stephen. How quickly can a novice put the quick set blade lock that puts the wheels pressure onto the wheels? Sorry, I don't recall the name of the helper unit that pulls the wheels back into place when changing the blade. Um, Stephen, if this is for a 14 inch cast iron frame, uh, that would be the uh, Carter quick release. Um, it is uh um, they're, they're right around 150 bucks, I believe. Um, it, I, you can add it to any cast iron frame that has a standard U style yoke. Um, and it's basically two bolts, um, and bolted on. It'll take you about 30 minutes. Uh, I've kind of gotten mine down to about seven minutes just because I, I've done so many of them. Um, mm -hmm. but a, about 30 minutes to install it. And then you've got a quick release that uh, not only takes the tension off the blade, puts it back on right back to the same tension, but with a Carter quick release, matter of fact, you can see it on the saw that's right over here in the corner. Um, it's got an orange knob on it. So when you lift up and pull down, that orange knob is right in your way. You don't accidentally turn the saw on um, and destroy your blade when it's uh, running loose. I've done that. <laughs> yep. uh, and uh, that quick release is my patent. Um, so um, that's the reason that I, I wanted that orange knob on there. I destroyed many a blade because I just walk up and push it and forgot that it was detentioned. And so that was part of my patent. Right on. Alex, I have a question for you. Um, <clears throat> I was looking at your Facebook page earlier today and I saw some of the, the 3d um, bandsaw um, cutting boards. Cutting boards. Thank you. I'm getting, you know, you get older, you start forgetting words you use every day. Um, in there. That, how did you get into that? That's pretty amazing stuff. You know, um, it, it was basically something that uh, I attempted because everybody said you had to do it on a table saw. Um, and, and you got to remember, this is a 16th century Chinese art. It's not, I mean, Escher did it. Um, there are, it's just, it's been around forever. Um, I just uh, figured out how to do it on the bandsaw so that there was less waste. I felt that it was a lot less dangerous um, because when you cut 30 degrees, seven eighths of an inch wide on a table saw, <laughs> eh, I, and I'm not so much worried as much about fingers as I am kickback at 30 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, and even when uh, I attempted to do it on the table saw, I found that anytime you stopped and started, when you're cutting four foot long strips, that wood bows, so you get the table saw mark in the wood, which means you got to plane it anyhow. So why not do it on the bandsaw um, and get more material out of it? It's a lot safer, in my opinion, 
and um, it, it just it, it made a lot of sense uh, for what I do. Um, and of course, uh, being able to tell everybody that a bandsaw does not drift um, is uh, quite handy as well. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't. And I proved that in your shop. Yeah, no, you did. <laughs> uh, which uh, I don't see that sticker on there anymore. Sticker? Oh, Lord. Don't don't make me whip out the bandsaw life. You're talking about the Carter sticker that's up at the top of the bandsaw? Yeah. It's still there. I, I'm going to need some proof of life. <laughs> I'm, I'm like 100% sure it's there. I didn't take it off. I'm kidding you. <laughs> Boy, I made him look. <laughs> Man, yeah, I was like, who stole my Carter sticker? <laughs> and that's a Bands All Life sticker, not a Carter sticker. Oh, right. Bands All Life, sorry. <laughs> that's that's me. Carter is uh, uh, an no. absolutely wonderful company. But Bands All Life is all about uh, the uh, Snodgrass method. Right Sam on. Um, Peter McManus says hello from Scotland, and I think he's watched every. He has, thing. you know, I, I, I got to. He's in some weird time frame. He is. Too. He's like at two in the morning. Peter has joined us every weekend. Uh, he is in Scotland, and you know, I, I wish that I could do it at a better time. I, I honestly, I would love to do a Zoom with Peter um, because he's joined us every time, and uh, it, it's it's been. It's been pretty neat that uh, over there in Scotland. Matter of fact, Peter, if you're on Zoom, uh, you you uh, um, uh, send me a message. I'll try to get you in on this meeting. How's that? That's cool. Um, sorry. Oh, it's there's. Uh, Plenty of things popping up there. There are people, Stephen appreciates you doing this while everybody's uh, shut down and locked down and can't do anything. Well, Stephen, uh, we, we love having people on here. And, uh, you know, uh, the first time that uh, I, I attempted this was with Izzy. And uh, we tried to do it on a Facebook. And then we found out that uh, it, it couldn't happen. And so well, that was my fault. I gave you bad information. So, I, you know, I, no, I, I'm going to let you throw yourself under the bus there because uh, I wasn't <laughs> even going to mention that. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it uh, we found out that zoom worked just fine. Um, and then we found out that, uh, well, 10 year old computers don't exactly work real well in uh, today's world. Um, and, uh, literally on Wednesday uh, with a brand new computer, ethernet, we couldn't get this thing to work, uh, Izzy and I. So I called the, uh, my wife told me to call the internet company last night and we upped it to a gig and look at here, it's running like a dream. Right on. <laughs> so see there, it only takes money and time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like woodworking. That sounds like a motto to life. <laughs> Oh, Sandra. Uh, Scott Phillips from Alabama is here. Scott Phillips is the uh, engineer. Uh, did you get to watch the moon log? Mm -mm. Um, the moon log um, was a log uh, that was uh, knocked down in. Uh, oh, yeah, of course I did. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, I'm sitting uh, here thinking you're like a television show or something. I'm like, no, <laughs> I didn't see that. So. So that moon log was brought up by uh, Scott Phillips, who's the engineer uh, from NASA. Um, and he's right on my shop to uh, cut it. Matter of fact, his signature's on that NASA sticker up there. Um, and uh, he is very the, cool. He is uh, the one that builds those space shuttles that uh, you see me uh, carry around. Oh, that's all. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all. <laughs> so. All right. That's amazing. Yeah, great, great, absolutely great friend to have. Troy says that the 3D cutting board is easy to make once you've taken your class. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's some that's some high praise right there, Alex. Well, you know, I got to tell you, um, after I messed up several dozen 
um, I was able to make them pretty well um, and and teach it. Um, and it, it really is pretty easy. They are. Once you've made one and you kind of learn all those little techniques, um, it, it really is uh, pretty easy. And I'm finding so many people that have taken my class posting photos of making that um, and just uh, uh, just does my heart good. It tells me that uh, I, I said something right in the class. So there really is something about that when you I, I experienced that a little bit when I post a set of plans for an Adirondack chair and some people share it and build it and they share it. It's just, you know, it, it's for me, it's like, you know, that somebody went out to their shop, they put in the effort to get the material to build the thing. And a lot of them do better jobs than I did at building the chair. You know, I mean, they just, I made it, this is like an outdoor chair. I'm, it's an outdoor chair. These guys just went all out and you're looking at it and you're just going, man, that's awesome. <laughs> so now, did you, uh, Izzy, did you uh, see on there that I'll be giving away a uh, Powermatic bandsaw uh, on the 4th of July? No. Yes. and Oh, yeah, you, you did mention that. You, you talked about that in your shop tour. Absolutely. Um, I am going to uh, give away a bandsaw to um, anybody that wants to enter, um, and they have to come to my shop spend a day with me learning how to tune up bandsaws, uh, making bandsaw boxes, maybe doing a couple other little things, and they get to take home a $1,500 power mat. Matter of fact, the same identical bandsaw you see right here. Oh, that's awesome. So um, That is awesome. I think what I'm going to do, and I've Where already- Where do I enter? Uh, well, <laughs> I think you would be perfect for this. And the reason that I say that um, the only way to enter uh, is to post your favorite product product that you've ever made uh, on Bandsaw Life. Um, once you post that photo, you are entered to win, and we're going to draw somebody on the 4th of July. But I'll be putting that post out later this evening, uh, right after I tell Troy um, or show Troy the post, and he approves because... I don't make a move on uh, internet stuff without Troy. Sure, sure. Well, that, you hear that, guys? Um, start digging through those photos of your favorite projects. Absolutely, please. Very cool stuff. Very cool uh, stuff. Bandsaw Life on Facebook. So, and and I, on Bandsaw Life, um, I'm able to get more than five thousand followers. Um, so, it, I. I can add more people right now. I can tell you that my personal page is full um, and, uh, uh, and still friend me uh, as I, you know, I lose maybe one or two people a, a month. Uh, I, I add people in. So happy to right do on. that. But Bandsaw Life, you can get on and uh, contact me anytime that you want. Get over there, y'all. Absolutely. Sandra? Jamie says, hi guys, I'm watching two guys that I would love to work with for a day and maybe come up with jigs that would help me to better, help me better in my production. I don't know what Jamie does. Uh, well, it, you know, uh, spending a day with you, looking at your shop, you know, with your CNC stuff, I would, I, you know, if I ever needed a jig, you're the first man I'm coming to because you can help design and shape it on the CNC or hand build it. Um, and that, I don't think there's many projects that you can't live without some sort of jig. How about you? No, I think you're right. I think the jig jigs are what, well, you know, we spend a lot of money on tools, you know, especially guys like you and me who've been this in, in this for years and years and years. We spent small fortunes on equipment and tools over that period of time, but you know, and tools are typically, you know, excluding the bandsaw, tools are typically a one trick pony until you start adding jigs to them. And then all of a sudden this tool becomes not a one trick pony, but it could be a 20 trick pony. Now you can do all these different things. And just by the simplicity of adding, um, you know, a nonlinear system to whatever tool you happen to be using and you've got all these capabilities again. And I think Honestly, I think I built a lot of my channel was kind of built on that premise. Like we can just take this table saw and look, we can do 500 things with the table saw. Like you know? make bowl. Bowling balls, bowls, uh, bowling pins. Um, I've seen you spiral, do spiral, <laughs> spiral, <laughs> um, staircase. Yeah. All, all that. 
So, and that's um, that's the one thing I do not have in my shop is a table saw. Yeah, well, you don't really need one, you know, with what you do, and you have um, twenty seven bandsaws. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, more than my wife will allow me. Another, how's that? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you know, so that 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 takes care of that. You know, I mean, with the bandsaw, the bandsaw is already a huge multi-purpose tool anyway. So, but and as you saw, to... as you've seen in my shop, even a bandsaw, you know, can use some. You can you can do a lot with a bandsaw that you can't do without put adding some jigs. When you add a jig to a bandsaw, all of a sudden you can do some amazing things. Yeah, and just like the uh, sliding table that uh, you and I have kind of discussed and worked mm -hmm. on. Um, I've got one kind of worked out um, and I want to put that video out, but until I have the proper rollers that uh, people can purchase, mm -hmm. uh, just it, it, it'd be, be like trying to get food with no fork. Um, you yeah. know, you, you really need those rollers. So mm -hmm. until I get those available so that everybody can uh, uh, purchase those, uh, there's just no sense in putting yeah. them out and kind of, getting everybody going when you get in the rollers when you get in the rollers. yeah and when you add a slide table to a bandsaw that becomes a whole different tool yeah you know it just it adds it adds versatility that is just amazing what's our next question karen says what advice would you give someone who has mainly done resawing on a bandsaw but wants to get into other things i did two cracked bandsaw boxes for my first ones a few days ago, but I want advice for the mass from the masters. He did a cracked bandsaw box as his first one. That's awesome. Good, good, good on you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not a, uh, it's not an easy task. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, there are so many things that a bandsaw has the capability of doing, um, from uh, you know, it, it, bowl projects to. Um, uh, your cutting boards to, um, uh, with the sliding table, there isn't anything that you couldn't really yeah. accomplish without, uh, maybe a joiner. Um, and that's kind of where I, I, I really enjoy that eight inch joiner out there. Sure. Uh, able to make cuts, um, and get it as clean and precise as possible. Um, and even if I cut it just a little bit wider, um, and get one eye edge joined and then cut the other side with a bandsaw. It's one pass on a joiner and I've got the exact dimensions that I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> bandsaws, hollow form vessels. I've done that on, on bandsaws. That's a lot wow. of fun. <laughs> now, uh, is that cutting the bottom off first or what are we doing? Oh, that's cutting the sides and gluing them all together. No, oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that uh 30 degree angle box that i did that right the, the diamond and it, i gotta tell you it took forever to figure out how to cut and turn and flip to get every angle the exact same um, oh i, I gotta I, imagine i gotta imagine that took a while so all yeah, right that's fun stuff sandra steven thinks you make uh you make reindeer on the bandsaw look way too easy well, now, how long uh, does it take you to make a reindeer on a bad side? Two, three seconds? Uh, no, it's, <laughs> uh, I think my record's about 31 seconds, but on average about 45 seconds. Um, and, and it depends on what I'm, I'm doing. If I'm showing off, I'm trying to do it as fast as possible. Um, if I'm doing them for sale uh, or uh, something that uh, is really intricate um to get the horns and everything as thin as possible then I, i'm going to take a minute minute and a half um but you got to remember i've been doing those for well over 30 years um i started on a scroll saw uh, doing that and uh, i promise you i got all my cuts out there because uh there there were many a days that i couldn't hardly touch my thumbs because they had been cut so bad on the scroll saw um, that you just wait for them to heal up just so you can start cutting again. Um, and uh, on a bandsaw, uh, I have only nicked myself one time, and it was actually this year in New Jersey. Um, had a piece of wood that uh, I cut off. 
I picked it up and the small piece dropped off and hit the table and started to bounce towards the blade. Well, like a moron, I reached up to grab it and just my thumb caught it. I won't do that again. I will let the blade break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah, bandsaws will get you just as fast as any other tool in the shop will. Absolutely. Um, only difference is you don't have that kickback um, and you can kind of let go of the wood a little bit and relax. Unlike a table stall, man, I just feel like I'm, I'm tense the whole time I'm cutting. Yeah, I... <sighs> hmm... I probably should, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I watch a buddy of mine down the street, Jamie Sarver, cut uh, on table saws. And, you know, it's just, it's they're an extension of his fingers. Um, and, and I'm sure after you've worked with one for so long, you're yeah. the same way. Um, and, and I feel the same way about a bandsaw, but I got to tell you, um, I, I have true respect for a bandsaw, but I can't be afraid of it because if I, I am, I can't really show people what it can really do. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way about most of the tools in my shop. There's still, there's still a few things that, you know, just will startle me like cutting plastics on a band on a, or cutting foam or plastics on a table saw can be a little iffy depending on the density of the plastics and because that blade spins at 3400 rpm and you can't slow it down so that's it's that's what it's going to spin at so and if you start melting plastic by not going not getting the right feed rate you can end up with some really nasty severe kickbacks that'll stick plastic right into your guts yeah and i kickback is to me is just as dangerous as uh well maybe not as dangerous but uh it's it's pretty brutal when it comes to uh pieces coming back at you i've heard some pretty maiming oh, yeah. stories yeah it can be I, I my more my worst story ever was with plastic actually i ended up pulling a chunk of um lexan oh it went into my hip just left it or just right of my groin a good solid inch and a half and i had to pull it out and it wasn't like a sharp one it was like a square <laughs> so it was just like yeah you know and that was through jeans and a, you know that's it wasn't cool. what kind of power those things have yeah yeah so. it, it's crazy you you can definitely you know i mean you can get hurt sandra um steven said that he was looking forward to seeing you in new york but your quick decision to do these live episodes make up for it that being said i like the live interaction uh, and, you know, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed the uh, live meetings on Friday night. Um, I, I, I hope that uh, we're getting a little bit more of a following, especially with uh, guys like Emmy. Uh, it, Emmy. Izzy. He, he, Izzy. I've been called a lot worse. You're good. Uh, Izzy <laughs> needs an Emmy. Um, <laughs> uh, Jimmy. Um, you got... Uh, uh, Jim Heavey, Roland Johnson. How how can you not have people tune in? I mean, it's just uh, I'm tuning in just to be there. Um, these I are don't know about you, but I think Roland might be the smartest guy in woodworking on the planet. He might be. <laughs> oh dear God! You had to go there. I'm gonna have to talk to Roland tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> His, his head will not fit in this screen anymore. <laughs> he is one smart cat. He, he really is. Um, very uh, intelligent. Um, never is at a loss for uh, a word or an opinion. And uh, absolutely uh, thank the world of him and Joanne. Um, they're just wonderful people. Um, and just thrilled to be able to get to work with them every year. So. Sandra? Um, question for you. Uh-oh. Boxer briefs. <laughs> I, I, I can't say either. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, go ahead. You, you started it. Which one is it, Izzy? Boxer briefs. <laughs> I see. Yeah. It depends on the weather. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, did I freeze again? There he yep. is. 
There he is. I think that's I think that's coming from my end, guys. I don't think that's you. So well, you know, don't quit telling on yourself. Good lord. (laughs) No, I'm hey. (laughs) We only got a couple more minutes, so uh right on. (laughs) Sandra? Travis would like to know what was the outcome of your robotics fighting? Uh it is designed. The I haven't built it yet. Is he talking about whether I'm going to build it or is he talking about the centipede? Actually, I think he's talking about the spider that you made with the, the legs. That was a centipede. That was the centipede. Yeah. Yeah. The robotic spider is designed and ready to be built. It's just a larger project. And it's one of those things that uh, it's kind of on hold, you know. Is this going to require an 18 foot circle cutter? No, no. I get away with like a four foot circle cutter, five foot circle cutter for this now, one. Now that we've mentioned it, we got to do it. We we got to do the 18 foot circle cut. Just trying to figure out how the heck we're going to. Oh, I guess that wouldn't be that hard. We're going to have to have a point nine feet out from the bandsaw. Yeah. And then a, you know what size of material you need for that? <laughs> I didn't say it'd be solid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, what is it? What are they doing out there with those seven sheets of plywood all stuck together? <laughs> oh, is he uh, you? Oh, the of the little faith. <laughs> I know it can be done. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> if nothing else, we can get Jimmy down there to do the metal work. Yeah, yeah, that, in a heartbeat. Um, no, the spider is still a thing. Uh, the spider and the scorpion are still things. Um, just timing. You know, just got to wait for it to be the right time and physically capable and all that stuff. I really do need, I haven't done a really crazy build in a while and I need to think of something that's, that's manageable and entertaining that I can, I can whip up. Cause that it's been a while. I need something to, I need something to for my kids to come running out in the yard and go, wow, dad. So. <laughs> Well, if you guys have not seen Izzy's page, number one, uh, I, I'm wondering where you've been, but uh, you, you got to go watch some of the stuff that he does. It's absolutely, uh, it, it is, he is the the he of the Rebecca de Groot world. He is absolutely, <laughs> he does everything that you would never think of, um, bigger, more spectacular, um, I'd like to say then Tim, the tool man, Taylor, but come on. Uh, <laughs> no, nobody's that. No, no. I, uh, <laughs> no, maybe if I build a drill powered rocket ship, I'll, I can claim that, but that's, that's a ways off. So All right. <laughs> I'll let you, <laughs> I have a crash test dummy suit around here somewhere. I'm sure it would fit you just fine. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I've uh, done the skydive, the bungee jump. So I've, I feel like I have you really, oh, yeah, I feel like I've ridden uh, the two biggest rides in the park. Um, the only other thing I can do is get out outer space. I, um, I'll, I'll, because it's your only, because it's your show, Alex, I'll, I'll let out a little weakness. I have, Uh-oh. I am terrified of heights. Really Ter- terrified. You put me on top of a four foot ladder and I'm like, get me down. Now that being said, I'll jump on a motorcycle and drive that sucker 250 miles an hour. Yeah. I've never met a man that scared me, <laughs> but I am terrified of heights. <laughs> so. um, kind of like uh, somebody I know in the family that is, uh, he, he's a huge guy. He's like six, three, six, four. He's scared to death of spiders. <laughs> He said, oh, that's awesome. He said, there was a spider on the door. And I got to tell you, I was going out. He backed me down. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the floor. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> do we have, uh, well, it's eight o'clock, eight o'clock. Already? It is. Oh. I know. Doesn't the hour just fly by? It's, it, it does for sure. Nice. So, well, uh, you know, Izzy, thank you so, so much uh, for not only joining us a second time, but uh, this time uh, being able to uh, uh, get on screen, um, do all that uh, you do. Thank you for uh, your YouTube channel. Um, It has inspired so many people 
um, in, including myself. Um, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing what it is that you do next. All right. Thank you very much for having me, Alex. It's a real honor and pleasure to be here with you. Well, so. um, I hope you and your family stay safe. Um, you know, keep them babies close. Um, and uh, remember, everybody, wash those hands. Right on. All right, Izzy. Again, thank you. Have a good, great weekend, and I'll talk to you here in just a couple minutes. Take care, everybody.